So continuing on with the Fire Cannot Kill a Dragon book, one thing I noticed was that several times the showrunners, writers, and the author of the book himself try a few times to give excuses for like the bad decisions made during the final few seasons, and specifically with the storylines from mm. Littlefinger, Danny, and even Bran. Uh, the reason they gave for the whole Bran storyline is that because the Night King invaded the cave during his training session, he wasn't able to fully complete the training and therefore had all this knowledge but was unable to really utilize it. So Brian Cogman kind of likened it to how in Empire Strikes Back, Luke doesn't really finish his training, so yeah. Yeah, it, it's the time travel had no effect on the plot whatsoever, except for explaining how Hodor, Hodor got his name. Like it was it was useless. It was dumb. Like, like, yes, at the time, we all had broken hearts. We saw Hodor die. There was this creepy time travel loop. It, time travel had no effect on anything else going forward. See, the funny thing is but, that they specifically say in the book that the writers knew fans would complain about the, all the plot holes that would come from Bran having all these new abilities. So they used the Night King interrupting his training as a way to explain why he doesn't use these new abilities later on. So right, and, It could have been done without time travel. Like, yeah, you know. Uh, well, according to George, he's, it's going to be very different, somewhat different in the uh, in the books. No, I mean, I'm almost, I'm almost certain that in the books, like time travel will have a fundamental effect on the ending of the of the story and like how everything comes together. But, um, you know, because what why else introduce such a bomb like that if not your if not to be used later? It's just. You, which is why it was so shocking. It was so shocking to watch season eight to get to the end and not have time travel be back. Like you, you introduced time travel in the middle of a fantasy story for the function of explaining how a minor character got his name. Like, <laughs> like, come on. <laughs> like, uh. I mean, it's the equivalent of saying like, of introducing an android to explain, you know, how, why Dario had two different characters, like two different actors, like, like, or, or, you know, anything like what's like, <laughs> I get what you mean. Uh, also in the book, the author, as well as some of the writers mentioned that it was a bit, a bit poetic that Littlefinger was done in by the Starks while trying to turn them against each other. Sansa, who resembles Catelyn, rejected and used him for her own ends. Arya using the dagger to kill Littlefinger, just like he used it to betray Ned, which ultimately led to Ned's death. And how Bran, named after his uncle that originally beat Littlefinger, had the quote-unquote evidence that led to Littlefinger's demise. The book also confirms that it was Littlefinger who sent the assassin, but the showrunners don't quite confirm it, so it's still up in the air. Because that's one of the lingering plots that's mm. never really truly really confirmed even in the books we don't really know who sent the cat's paw assassin to kill bran and he and right so far they're, they're like people kind of believe it's it's joffrey but but it doesn't really like joffrey doesn't really make sense so um, in in the books right but in yeah. the show i guess it was little finger i, I kind of hate finger, this yeah. because like the whole storyline i i still vehemently disagree with anybody who thinks it was a clever storyline Littlefinger trying to turn Sansa and Arya against each other I just don't buy that no it was I just it was, truly don't it, there was nothing poetic about it it was a stupid plot line and it was resolved with an ex machina like they didn't do anything like it's not like they didn't they all sat there you know with Arya with her with her shit-eating grin at the end as if they like somehow bested Littlefinger you didn't best anyone. Like your omnipotent brother handed you knowledge, infinite knowledge from, you know, a godlike network of super trees. Like that's not like, haha, we got you. We outfought you. Well, well, the you, book you know? like, says evidence, but there was no evidence really presented besides Bran, who's more of a witness than evidence. But at the same time, you're going to believe that he knows all this stuff with yeah. no real, like, eh. Right. Like, you know, it, it, they 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 trusted the word of a catatonic boy and, and and murdered a man like with no due process, no trial by battle, nothing like they just killed a guy based on something Brand said. That was it. 
<laughs> I mean, the, the other the... character that they gave uh, shed more light on uh, and tried to once again, you know, tried to give us more closure on was Daenerys. The writers mm. and the cast, the cast especially, were very surprised at many points throughout the show's history when fans cheered on Daenerys's methods at dishing out punishment to those she was up against. Brian mm. Cogman once again said, "In our minds, we thought Randall Tar the Randall Tarly scene was disturbing." Then I watched it with a crowd of people at a friend's house, and they were cheering. Weirdly, the audience just didn't care. They loved Danny. Um, this reminds me of how you're still upset that Tyrion killed Shay and Tywin, and everybody's completely cool with him. Yeah, I mean, the the problem is is when you when you give the right music and and you set everything up in a certain way, like you're telling the audience who to root for, um, and. They did that for scene after scene of just her murdering people. And then you're like, oh, this is a great thing. They didn't play creepy music, you know, like they they set up these these clear heroes that you were supposed to root for. And then when all of a sudden it was time, like, no, you're not supposed to root for these people. Then why did you play all that like majestic music? Like when when in those previous scenes, like I guess I guess they were trying to like, you know, take the carpet out from under you and like, ah, because even the author himself steps in and reminds the reader of one scene in the previous season where Daenerys crucified the masters as retaliation, yeah. only to discover later that some of those she crucified had no part in slavery and some even fought against the practice altogether. Yeah. Yeah. I P mean, Peter Dinklage even points out that she didn't need to kill both Randall Tarly and his son. That was... I right. I mean, that scene, they, they spent, they spent a lot of time to all of a sudden tell the, the, I will say that, you know, they did their, their time to say like, this is not a good thing because you had the Tyrion sitting there going, Oh, this is bad. Even the Tyrion's not exactly shouldn't be the, the example of morality. They used him as, as the moral compass that the audience was supposed to follow. So it is a little weird that people were cheering because that mm -hmm. scene, it's pretty obvious how you're supposed to feel. You're supposed to feel like Tyrion feels, you know? Well, there was this woman in my comment section during season seven, and I remember her making the argument that Daenerys had to cement herself as this force to be reckoned with and show off her power because she was a woman. And in a world dominated by men where women are sometimes seen as weaker or having quote unquote soft hearts, um, she kind of had to lay down the law and take no shit from people, especially if enemies and potential allies were to take her seriously. Mm. Because if you remember, that was somewhat of a small plot line that got dropped, that Daenerys was going around defeating armies and kind of accepting them into her army. Remember that she did that with, like, after the, the train attack? Mm -hmm, she told yeah. them, like, I'm not your enemy, Cersei is, join me, blah, blah, blah. And then we yeah. get, like, the, the madness thing. It came, it came out of nowhere. It was, yeah, it was very, very, a lot of poor, poor, poor motivation on, on what happened, yeah. Well, I'm glad you said that because another interesting thing that the book points out is that Danny turning crazy was set up from, like, early on. And they started doing it by giving Amelia Clark little notes throughout the earlier seasons to play certain scenes a bit differently as a way of sprinkling in the madness over time. And I will say, you and I were very critical of her sudden turn, but the author in the book actually has a great quote that really put the whole turn in a new perspective for me that I really appreciate. And I quote, Because, of course, there was good in Daenerys too. There were acts of benevolence and restraint. Her hatred of slavery was genuine and unselfish. Daenerys was a character who always preferred to do the right thing, so long as doing the right thing didn't entirely thwart her own ambition or undermine her perceived authority to rule. When Daenerys bumped up against such conflicts, it was her advisors who typically pushed her towards the moral choice, and they had to make pragmatic arguments to explain why doing the right thing was also better for Daenerys. Whereas Jon Snow always did the right thing, often foolishly and regardless of consequence. Uh, I mean, he hung a little boy. Um, Jon Snow didn't always do the right thing, but we're but we're certainly. Oh, that's right. Well, to be <laughs> fair, Ollie sucked. We all hated Ollie, and he stabbed the Lord Commander. Uh -huh. So fuck Ollie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh huh. So I mean, it's I don't know. Like, like that's the thing is, you're you're told what to believe a little too much, I guess, in the in the in the last season. Um, rather than being led there by by the actions and everything kind of naturally organically and so people people didn't uh people didn't like the sudden switch for Daenerys and it didn't it didn't sit with them 
very well. You know, so I, I, I do think they kind of ruined it by like having so much majestic music played for Daenerys in the previous seasons over and over. Every time she got onto a dragon, everyone's like, oh, what a wondrous thing. Da, 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 da. As she fly, you know, as she flies to the sky or like burning the cows, like, whoa, 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 whoa. those cows weren't even that bad. Like, you know, like. I remember you hated the fuck out of like every time the dragons appeared on screen, they had like, <laughs> and everyone's just like still in shock. Like, oh my gosh, those majestic dragons. Like, have it be, you know, just, you don't need it. You don't need that music. Um, have it be a little creepier. Let me feel it. Like, you know, had that been the case where we didn't know what was coming, you know, um, rather than it being sprung on us, you know, all at once in season seven and eight. Mm -hmm. You know, would have been, would have been a little better.